Let's pick it up in 34. Acts 10, 34. Look what it said. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Peter opens his mouth and Peter says, God is no respecter of persons. In essence, God said, I'm do it for this side and leave this side vacant. I don't do it for the milk and exclude the end. God is not a respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. So all you got to do is learn him. We just got to be dealing with that fear is there. That word fear is there. If you will revere God, and if you'll seek out the righteousness of God, God says, guess what? You're accepted. That's all it's going to take. Is that you fear him, revere him, worship him, and that you seek to walk in a right place versus a wrong place. He's no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of what? Faith. He is a respecter of belief. If you can believe he can, he will. If you can believe he's able, he'll do it. But you got to believe, amen? But in every nation, he says it doesn't matter, in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. And it was how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How? With the Holy Ghost. God anointed him. This is the message. Get anointed. God is no respect to person. God will put his power where his power is believed. God will place his power where his power is received. Jesus. So God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He anointed him with what? The Holy Ghost. And with what? Power. The authority, the right to use it. Who went 
about doing what? And healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was what? God was with him. God showed up in every aspect of Jesus' ministry and life to do what? Do good and heal. To validate and to vindicate every word he spoke. Remember we looked in Hebrews 2. And the Bible says, God says he will validate his word with what? Signs, wonders, and miracles. But Jesus, everything Jesus said, everything Jesus preached, everything Jesus did, God was with him doing what? Validating. God was with him doing what? Supernatural manifestations and miraculous things because he feared him and he what? Believed to be right with God. He went about doing good and healing all that were what? Oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. In essence, he never allowed the enemy to circumvent who he was or what he was sent to do. He never allowed what the enemy was doing to others to stay. He wanted others set free. He wanted others to receive the miraculous power of God. See, when you have a heart for others, God says, I'll show up for you. When you have a heart for others, when you want to see others free, I'll set you free. Mm. See, because again, it matters what we sow. The Bible talks, go to Galatians right quick. Verse 1, Galatians 6, 1. It says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, you but your spiritual what? Restore with such a one. You can't restore till you get spiritual love. Right? Restore so such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou be what? Tempted. Bear ye one another's burden, so that ye fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let every man prove his own what? Works, and then he shall have what? Rejoicing in himself alone and not in another, for every man shall bear his own burden. So let him that is taught in the word communicate. We dealt with that means tonight. That teach him in all good things. In essence, Jesus says, What I teach you, you're going to be able to teach others. What I put in you, others are going to be able to draw it out of you. We all just like whales. God says, I want you to be a well so others can drink from you, so others can see power in this demonstration. Look what he says, seven. So be what? Be not deceived. God is not what? Mocked. And that's what God said. You can't make a mockery out of this. Huh? I've got a purpose. I've got a plan. And it works. For whatsoever a man soweth, that's what you're going to reap. So you've got to be careful in what you sow. You got to be careful in what you dispense. Amen? Look at 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap what? But he that soweth to the spirit, that's a big S, he that soweth to the spirit, or he that is in tune with the Holy Spirit shall of the spirit reap life what? Now why? Because you live, you're going to help somebody else live. Because of what God is doing in you. And you choose not to be stingy and selfish with the blessing. Catch it today. God is blessing us, but he ain't blessing us just for us. He ain't pouring out on us just for us. Do we need it? Of course we do. But the Bible says he's given us to suffer. He's given us to release. So we got to make some decisions in this season and hour that we understand the purpose for which God has called us out. The purpose for which God is but He's not a respectable person. He wants to use everybody, but your motive got to be right. Your desire, your passion got to be right. And it's got to always be bigger than you. And you see in this but he that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh be corrupted. But he that soweth to the spirit, he that wants a relationship, he that wants a divine involvement with the spirit of God, is from the spirit of God going to what? Read life. 
Now, this principle works naturally just as well as it's spiritual. What you sow is what you reap. Now, if you sow nothing, you get nothing. So you got to have a ready made up mind. I come to put in for God. Hmm? I come to be the seed bag God wants. I come to release what God has given me back. I can't be stingy with the gift. I can't be stingy with the blessing. Why? Because I don't want to be cut off. Look what he says. Now, and let us not be weary. Now, this seems, now I'm, I'm reading it down a different light than I've seen it before. He said, and be not weary and well doing. Now, it's amazing. You wouldn't even think that to be so. Why would you be weary in doing good? Because oftentimes, to those to whom we do good, can't pay us back. Huh? We're often good to those who can't give back what we dispense. But this is what the scripture said. He that lendeth unto the poor lendeth unto who? The Lord. You got to learn how to expect God to reward. Those you sow into can't give back. Those you may be a blessing to can't give back. But God can. Huh? You got to remember, I do as I do as unto who? Unto the Lord. Looking for who to pay me back. For who to keep giving me life. For who to keep opening doors that need to be opened. God. So we have to have the right what? Perspectives. God says, I got no problem blessing you. I got no problem keeping you. I got no problem causing you to live, but you cannot do it for you alone. Your heart got to be big. Huh? Your heart has to be extravagant. You got to see beyond you. My, as I was saying, my, my, me, my four, and no more. No, 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 no. Me, my four, and everybody that's included. Huh? Why? Look at uh, go to the four. This one shifted. Look for it. Look at Luke 4, picking it up in verse 14. 40, 40. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all of the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for the read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to what? Preach the gospel. Well, as 10 just said, God did anoint him, right? He preached the gospel. He went about doing good and healing all men of that were what? Sick. But this is where he discovered it. See, it's an amazing thing when you discover your purpose. It is an amazing thing when you discover God's intent for your life. So that you ain't just continually walking about aimlessly in life. He's discovered the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. There's a reason I'm anointed. You don't get anointed just to get anointed. You get anointed for purpose. What's on you is for a purpose. What's on you is for a demographic. What's on you is for a region. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. That word had, you see that? He has anointed me. See, again, it's discovery. I have to come into a place of discovery. It don't work till you discover. Come on, y'all. 
have anointed me. So my purpose was all along to preach the gospel. Until I start preaching the gospel, it don't make sense. Until I start, until I start doing what I've been called to do, it don't make sense. I can do this, I can do that, I can do that, but it ain't working till I'm in my position. Hmm? Are you walking with me today? Huh? You can be good as gold in this, this, and that, and still be miserable. Because it's not where the anointing is for my life. He has anointed me. Here's what he anointed me to do. I didn't know. I'm just now discovered. I didn't know. I'm supposed to be preaching the gospel. I'm doing everything else but preaching. And God said, what's on you is not for you. It's for somebody else. And when you learn how to be a blessing to others, you will get blessed. Hmm? Watch this. It's the difference between the faucet dripping and the faucet being in full flow. Come on, y'all. Watch this here. He was ordered me to do what? Preach the gospel. But the gospel to who? Come on, y'all. Catch this. Who am I sent to? The ones that can't pay me with a word. I'm sent to the place who can't pay me well I'm worth. God, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. Because the poor are going to declare their riches after they hear you. Listen, 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 listen. When you give them what they need to hear, they're going to change. But they can't change till they hear you. How can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he's been sent? You got to know who you've been sent to. Hmm? See, well, I ain't going to preach to them. No, 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 no. You got to preach to whoever God said or sent you to. Huh? Jesus said, uh-uh. Here's my audience. Here's my mass interest. He says he sent me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal what is broken hearted folks. Huh? See, watch this, watch this, watch this. You always looking for the well, for the well in the hole. God says, where the broken. Where the broke, busted, and disgusted who know not the truth. Where are those who have been disappointed? Where are those who have been fragmented? Where are those who need me? Why? Because that's where I'm going. Ooh, shall I? Come on, y'all. Watch this here. To heal who? The broken heart. To preach deliverance to who? See, sometimes it's just disturbing who your real audience is. Sometimes you don't know your audience. Sometimes you don't know where the true power flows. Y'all didn't catch that one, did you? Come on, let me reel that one back so it don't go over your head. Listen to it, listen to it. There's a place where the anointing flows like a faucet. Watch this, watch this. Them that are whole don't need a physician. Huh? God said, if you want to see this anointing work, find some broken folks. Find some folks that are poor and broke, busted, and disgusted. Find somewhere where I can demonstrate my power. Here's where the action, when consistently taken, is going to get you the supernatural results. It's going to get you the God results, the divine results. Watch this, y'all. To preach deliverance to who? And recovery of sight to who? To set at liberty them that are... Now look at the audience, y'all. Look at the condition of the audience. 
Huh? Look at the condition of the audience. Y'all, I'm about to already. Look, 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 look. Look at the condition of the audience. Bro, must be disgusted. Captain, bruised, wounded, scarred up, messed up, tore up from the flow up. Y'all still ain't catching this thing. God, why are you sending me? God, why are you sending me? Here I am, Lord, send me. But God, why are you sending me? Even Moses in that, okay, God, you want me to go, but I got to tell these folks stuff. Who do I tell? He said, tell them I am. So regardless to condition, circumstance, situation, tell them I am. Tell them I got this. Tell them I can handle this. Tell them I'm Lord, I'm God, I'm Savior, and I'm King over all this. That's what they call it. Tell them I'm El Shaddai. Tell them I'm the all-breasted, all-sufficient one. And that your case is not a specialty to me. I handle it all. I deal with it all. I have enough for it all. But you still ain't caught the fact why he's sending you. Just told you though, but you, you still ain't catching me today. Why is he sending you? Why is that anointing on you? What is it then that you have to possess in order to go in to do this work? He's never sending you in ill-equipped, but he's sending you in fully equipped. Y'all still ain't catching me today. Come on, I told you I'm about to. I'm ready to go home in just five more minutes. Just not longer. Listen, if you got it, all right, let's just watch this here. Why would I send a poor man to tell a poor man something? If you broke and I'm broke, what we gonna do? Okay, now you're waking up. If I'm, if I am poor, and if I'm broken hearted, and if I'm in captivity, what can I tell you? Y'all still, y'all still, y'all, y'all almost there. See, it's important that you get in the anointing so you can see you the way God sees you. It's important for you to get in the anointing and get in the presence of God so God can reestablish for you what he gave you before you left heaven. Before you were given your assignment, before you had a vision, he had already given you provision. Jesus discovered through the reading, this is me. I'm the one. I'm the rich one. I'm the healed one. I'm the one with the anointing. I'm the one that has this task and assignment. God has put it on me. Watch what he said. To set at liberty. How you going to set somebody at liberty in you and God? See, uh, this was a little heavy this morning. I'm trying to help you understand and to discover you already got it. You just ain't discovered it yet. You already got it. Jesus, you already got it. Now understand what 
you got. And then you what you got. Y'all, look what he's saying. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then the Bible said, and he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fashioned on him. And he began to say, look what he's saying now. Look what he is now saying. See what it bothered with the Holy Spirit. See what it bothered with, with, the word, with the Word of God. See what it will do. It will give you something to say. Y'all still ain't caught it up. If the Spirit is giving you something to say, He's also giving Himself something to validate. Come on, y'all. So if I learn to say what He said, I don't have validation. Y'all miss that. If I learn to say, if I learn to speak, if I learn to decree, if I learn to prophesy what he say, I'll have what I say. Because he's watching over his word to what? Perform it. But he ain't going to perform nothing you ain't saying. So until you say you blessed, until you say you heal, until you say you delivered, until you say you free, you okay with your bondage? You always you okay with your brokenness? You okay with poverty? Hmm? Watch this, watch this. Because you can't help nobody else because you're so busy trying to help yourself. But you're trying to help yourself without the revelation that you already been helped. God has already made this possible for you. So you want to learn how to make some choices right now. Either I'm going to trust this book, I'm going to believe this book, I'm going to do this book, or I'm going to leave this book alone. Because failure to obey will cost you. Huh? Watch this here, watch this here. If Jesus had not walked in what he read, none of us would be in the room. your obedience? Who's tied to your obedience? How many are depending on you to obey? How many are dependent upon your walking in your purpose? For Jesus, it was all of us. But now you got to say, okay, but who has he sent me to? Who have I been assigned to? Whose life matters on my decision? Choose you this day. Who you going to serve? Choose you this day. You want life and death, blessings and curse. Choose you. Watch this. This day. This day. This day. 24 hours. You want to fast and pray. He said, no, 24 hours. Make a choice. You got 24 hours to decide. When it's life and death, when it's blessings and curse, you got 24 hours. Jesus. Am I in the book? Watch this here. The phrase says, this day. A day is what? 24 hours. Anything over 22 hours, 24 hours, you're in trouble. When it comes to life and death, when it comes to blessing and cursing, 24 hours. Choose ye. Y'all hear me. 
He is. When? The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. In the day. There's a day when God is speaking. There's a day when God is instructing. There's a day when God is revealing his divine will and purpose. You ain't got a lifetime to decide. Jesus, you got three years to work this ministry. You ain't got all day. Thank you, see. You see this? This says. Make a decision. Your anointing has revealed your purpose. Make a decision. Watch this here. Watch this here. Now, I've not only revealed your purpose, I've revealed your audience. Make a decision. I've given you the geographical and the demographical location. Really, what you going to do? What you going to do? You want to be anointed, but you don't know what you want to be anointed for. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, here it is. This is what I need from you. This is what I have assigned you. This is what I have called you to. He closed the book. And he began to say to them, look at this, this day, There's no more debate. There's no more deliberation. There's no more calling of the minds and meeting of the minds. So, now, I don't know what you're going to do after the day. But if Joshua said, as for me and my house, I don't know which turn you're going to take. I don't know you have to fork in the road. I don't know which way you going. But as for me and my house, this temple, those that are connected to me, we going with God. I'm going with the anointing. I'm following the power of God. I'm following the presence of God. I want to be where the miracles are, where the healing is, where the deliverance is, where people are being set free. I don't know what you're going to do. But I heard a voice. I read a word. And this day, Made my decision. My decision is for God I'll live. Yeah, yeah. And for God I'll die. Yeah, yeah. And either way it go, I'm still blessed. Yeah. I'm still blessed, Michael. If I stay, I'm blessed. If I go, I'm blessed. Why? Because I'm in Him. Watch this, I said you caught it, but you didn't catch it. In him I live, move, and have my being. I choose to be who God called me to be. Do what God called me to do. Have what God told me I could have. Come on. In him. That, 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 that could be questioned. Because some ain't all the way in. And when you ain't all the way in, it makes deciding hard. When you ain't all the way in, when you're straddling the fence, it makes making decisions difficult. But God needs to know from us, what do you decide? You're not going to stop God, you're only going to hinder you. Huh? Choose you what? This day. So Jesus come back and said, this day is this scripture. Yeah, come on, y'all. Y'all ain't gonna make me work too hard. Let's go. Right. This day, this scripture 
So the day I met the scripture, huh? there's a day when God brings all the fullness of everything together. This day. What happened this day? I heard the word. What happened today? I'm in a place and position to hear the word. Now, the word I heard is putting a mandate on me. Watch this. Watch this. You're still in color. Watch this. He said this day is this scripture fulfilled. So what was missing from the scripture? Me. What was missing from the order? What was holding up this from coming to pass? It was already in place. It was already ready to go. I just hadn't got that yet. But now that I'm here, and the word is here, now there's a merging. Jesus said, Jesus said, I'm telling you what he said. Until I got this, I was never fulfilled. There's some places you're never going to be fulfilled in until you get in line with what the will. Jesus said, it's fulfilled now. Because I got it. It's fulfilled now. I understand. It's fulfilled now. And I don't care what y'all think about me. Because it's better for me to please God can to please you. You ain't got him nor hell to put me in. You trying to get somewhere yourself. Why you want to sit in judgment of me? But I'm going to be who God called me. Jesus said. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Catch me right now. Because I'm going to release something to you. There's some things getting ready to happen in 24 hours. Of revelation. Catch me through. So, the day he saw this, it happened. Within a 24 hour period of revelation, it happened. See, now you done got quiet. Now you done got quiet. Because there's a 24 hour hit on your life to line up, to get in place, to get in position with the word of God. So what? Catch this to why you deliberate. Do you want fulfillment or not? Do you want to be whole or not? Do you want to be right with God or not? In the day that you hear his voice. First mistake you're going to make is if you harden your heart. And the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in, watch this, provocation. Which means you got a choice now. I can either provoke God to anger or I can provoke God to bless you. In the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Watch this. Most times we say we know it's God and we hear God's voice, but then where does your heart get hard? See, God looks not on man as man. He looks at the heart. See, hard-hearted people can't work for God. Because hard-hearted people got their own way of living for God. They justify what they want to justify. They do what they want to do. They just don't obey God. So in the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in what? Provocation. 
See, watch this, watch this. Let me help you. See, you can be religious and be provoking God. You can be in tradition and don't even realize you angling God with that foolishness. The Lord know my heart. If the Lord really know your heart, See, you saying what you heard down through the years. The Lord know my heart. So you want a justification of a mistake. So what you just tried to do was bring God down to your level. And God said, no, 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 no. Not so. I don't come down, you come up. Moses, come to the mountain. I'm not speaking to you in the valley because I'm ready to kill everything in the valley. And so before I kill you, come up to the mountain. Let me refresh you as to my commandments. You take them back down. God will always call you up. He'll never meet with you down. He'll meet with you up. This day is fulfilled in your ears. This day, harden not your heart. Don't provoke me. If you love me, keep my. If you love me, this should not be a grievous action. Wanting to be blessed, wanting to be a blessing to others should never grieve you. Wanting to carry the weight, the kabbalah, the glory of God should never be a grievous action. You ought to feel good. That you have the weight of God, which is not, which is light. That you have, watch this, watch this, the burden of the Lord. The burden of the Lord is when I can feel what others feel. But I feel it to the place I got to take action and not just be a spectator. Looking. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Looking to see what God going to do. And God says, but I put you there. Looking to see what somebody else going to do. And God says, I assigned you. Oh, you don't forgot your assignment. Oh, you done forgot your will, I mean, your, uh, what God's will for you. You done forgot your purpose. Or did you get a few licks and decide you want to take a day off? You wanted to retreat, you wanted to run. Did somebody say something and make you bag up? Who is she? Who is he? Who they think they are? I'm the anointed of God. I'm the saved one. I'm the one God saved for such a time as this. I'm the Esther that has come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I'm the Nehemiah that's building in this season. You got to know the season. Mm, season. You got to know the season of your anointing. See, you right here thinking seasons don't change, but that's a lie. Huh? You think seasons don't change. You think you can't miss it. I just preached that one last week. Don't miss God. Hannah and Sapphira missed God. So, what you gonna do? This day, this day, right now, today. Is the scripture fulfilled? 22. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, now watch this here, but watch this here. Ain't that Joseph's boy? <laughs> See, it's still looking naturally. But God has done something supernatural. See, God will do something in you long before people ever able to see it. The key is, do you know what he did in you? Do you understand 
his purpose and plan for your life. Huh? It's not uncommon for God to anoint you before he placed you. Go to 1 Samuel 16. 1 Samuel 16. I got into this this week. I do that so much in Listen. Watch this, watch this. See, this, this thing of being anointed, y'all, I'm telling you, it's more to it. See, watch these folks just right here. They say, oh yeah, I'm anointed. Uh, just put some oil for me, this more, man. This thing go, this thing go bone deep. You hear me? Did you hear what I just said? This is bone deep. What did Jeremiah say? It was like fire shut up in my mouth. Come on, y'all, you know I would jump out there without bagging. Huh? This is bone deep. Because there are come a place in time you want to turn this loose, but it's got to be in your bone, baby. Yes. Yes. To make you say, uh uh. It's a lick. It hurt. It was a hit. It stung. But I'm on my way back. Be like Terminator. I'll be back. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. This ain't old way. Watch this here. Let me help yourself. Look at 1 Samuel 16. And, and, and I got stuck right here in the process of dealing with all of this, but I got stuck right here. Look what it says. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Samuel was a prophet, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Samuel, you're a prophet. But you're having issues because I rejected the disobedience. In fact, I never wanted him in the first place. He was the people's choice. You see, there's a difference between the people's choice and God's choice. Many times you choose based on stature. God said, I choose based on heart. Because if I can't deal with your heart, I can't deal with you. Samuel, how long you going to mourn over what I'm through with? Saul is representation of your yesterday. Saul is representation of your past. Saul is representation of your past mistake. Saul is representation of all God disapproved of. How long you going to mourn over that? How long are you going to, one translation says, how long are you going to move around? Because I'm through with that. Huh? How long are you going to take issue with me? Because I said no. In the way, how can we get mad with God when God said no? In the amazing the things we go through when God says, I ain't in that. Samuel, how long you gonna mourn or move around for Saul seeing, watch this, y'all, catch this, I rejected him. I rejected him. I pulled back my anointing. Because there was no love. I pulled back. I tried to give you grace. I tried to go with your choice. But you chose wrong. That's what you want. Flip back over to 15. Saul had been given a commitment by God to kill everything. Saul had been given a commandment. Go down and give it to Malachite and kill it. God says, I don't want nothing to live because anything that lives is going to be a hindrance to the future. He couldn't do it. You know what he says? Look at, uh, well, let me finish this. 
and he took Agag, the king of Amalek, alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and the oxen and of the fat men and of the lamb and all that was good and all that was utterly and would not utterly destroy them. He wouldn't destroy them. But everything that was vile and refused, that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me. And have not performed, look at this, and have not performed my commandments. And he grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. Because he knew God was getting ready to bust a move on him. I said, I had enough of this. He out. Look what he said. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and is going about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. You just lied. No, you didn't. You did what you wanted to do. You didn't do what I told you to do. And now you're lying to not only God, from the story last week, you lied to the Holy Ghost. Now you lied to the prophet. The prophet gave you the commandment from the Lord, and now you're lying to the prophet. Oh, yeah, I killed everybody. Let me show you something. And Samuel came up to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou, O the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. This is what he said, I performed the commandment. And Samuel said, Well, what mean is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears? Because if you killed everything, I should hear nothing. If you took it out, the way you were supposed to say, I got to tell you today, the devil will tell you. The very enemy that tricked you into disobeying will now bleed on you. Look, watch this, watch this. Couldn't keep them sheep quiet. Huh? Them tail bearers talking. Watch what he said, watch what's happening. And so the Sabbath said, Lord, needed this bleeding of the sheep in my ear and the lowing of the oxen which I hear. And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen. Look at this, because we wanted to sacrifice to the Lord. God, I did this as a sacrifice to you. He said, yeah, if you be willing and obedient, you can eat the good. He said, but this was a sacrifice I didn't ask for. Be careful when you offer God something that costs you nothing. See, the cost in this was kill it all. The cost in this was leave nothing. The cost in this was I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. I want to know nothing else of it. But because they look so good, you couldn't let it go. Y'all wasn't with me today. Yeah, Watch this here. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. See, I'm into this word, this now. Whenever you see this day, this night, God says, It ain't gonna take me long. I got your answer already. Huh? Some things you won't know before moment. You better hear me. Huh? This day, this night, God said, it's going to be a 24-hour turnaround. Samuel said unto Saul, stay, I'll tell you what the Lord said to me this night. He said to him, say on. And Samuel said, when thou was little in thy own sight, when thou was not made the head of the tribe of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel, and the Lord sent thee on a journey, and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, of the Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore didst thou not obey? Wherefore didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? God said, I spoke to you. I told you. You agreed to and still did your own thing. People. 
and did his evil in the sight of the Lord. So I said, okay, this was evil in my sight. See, because watch this, nobody knew about it. Remember last week when I talked to you about them vows? He said, that vow you made for me, that covenant you made in secret. And now all of a sudden, I done blessed you, and you can't pay back what you said. You can't honor what your own word was. Oh, I know what the covenant was. I cut it with you. Yeah. Look what he says. And Saul said unto Sam, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have other destroyed Amalek. But the people took. Stop trying to blame everybody else for your decision. Then nobody put a gun to your head and make you disobey God. You did it willfully. You did it because you wanted to. You did it because you thought you were right and God was wrong. But the people took other spoil, sheep and oxen, and the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord. See, don't think you're doing God a favor in disobedience when you're not. And Samuel said, Have the Lord a great delight in prayer and offering and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. So watch this, it's been the caution. It's been the caution. See, why is it? Let me know about that. 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Willful disobedience, God says, is the same as witchcraft. Now watch this. We know witchcraft is for someone to speak and proclaim. But watch this. Sometimes you your own witch. You your own witch. You curse your You curse yourself. Rebellion. Rebellion is at the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness. Stubborn. You still determine to hold out as long as you can from obeying God. Stubborn. What did he say stubborn was? It's idolatry. Because you're worshiping you. You still, watch this, I'm going to help you. You still think that you are on the throne of your life. Huh? You your own king. You your own decision maker. You tell God what you're going to do. God, you God. But I tell me what I'm going to do. I heard the word, but he wasn't talking. He was talking to something. You didn't hear him talking to you. No, he talking to everybody in the room. But you know, this, this is that person that comes to church and the word is always for somebody else. God wasn't talking to me. Hmm? God wasn't talking to me. Rebellion is at the sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is as idolatry. You're idolizing, watch this, your own thoughts. Your own ways. You know more than God, but yet God had to save you. You know more than God, but yet God had to deliver you. Watch what he says. Because, and I'm going to flip now. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath rejected thee from being king. You rejected my word. I reject your spotted position. You rejected my word. I reject your spotted position. Now, I'm not going to 16. So Samuel, why, why are you grieving over this? I did what I'm going to do. I'm through with that. That's over with. Now, what I want you to do is I will send thee, uh, fill your horn, horn, horn with oil, 
and go, and I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I provided thee a king among his sons. I know who I want. I know where he is. Huh? That's a wrap over there. I'm through with that. That's a wrap. Take the oil and go anoint the one I want. Hmm? Take the oil, go anoint the one I want. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hearing, he'll kill me. Don't worry about Saul. Take the help with thee and say, I'm come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse, call Jesse. See, watch this here. Jesse didn't know. I'm going to help y'all with something. See, a lot of times you think you know, but you don't know. Jesse did not know he was being called, his family was being called, or that his family had been marked for the next succession. Take the help of tell my mother to make a sacrifice. Make sure, watch this, catch this, y'all. Make sure Jesse invited, because normally they would be on the list. Right. Normally, they wouldn't be at the meeting. But make sure an invitation goes out. I want Jesse to be there. Because Jesse don't even know what I'm getting ready to do. David don't know what I'm getting ready to do. Saul don't know what I'm getting ready to do. God ain't got to tell you what he do. one is, you just got to be ready. Go and get the oil. Go get Jesse. Make sure Jesse's there. He said, watch this here now. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou wilt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto you. Samuel, you ain't got no part in this. Just do what I tell you to do. Saul is rejected, and he ain't got no part in this. David don't even know what's coming to him. He ain't got nothing to do with this either. Jesse is daddy, and I ain't going to tell him neither. In fact, I ain't telling him no. Because you don't know how to act. All you need to know is I'm going to set this up. Huh? I'm going to set this up. Watch this here. And Samuel did what the Lord spake unto uh, was what the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Come and thou in peace. Now you man of God, I don't know what you carry, I don't know what your word is today. But we know you're here on a Sunday. You're the man of God, you're here for a purpose. I don't know, God's getting ready to do something. Is it peaceable? Because we know God can also be a God of war. And he said, Peaceably. I come to sacrifice unto the Lord. So sanctify yourselves. Come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his son, and he called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely this is the Lord's anointing. God said, That ain't the one. And for sake of time, he ran all the boys through. He said, I don't want you to run it. It's the house, it just ain't none of them. It's the right house. But it ain't your choice. In fact, the one I'm choosing is the least likely. The one I'm choosing, y'all thought would never be king. The one I'm choosing, you never would imagine him to be the one. Where is he? He on the back side of the mountain. He, he fights sheep and bears and doing everything. He's in preparation for the position. He just don't know it yet. Yes. Jesus. My God. See, sometimes God is preparing you when you don't even know you're being prepared. Hmm? He's tending sheep. How important is that? Because you're going to rule over a whole lot of folks. If you can handle sheep, you can handle people. But if you can protect the sheep by killing the lion and the bear, I know you can protect the people. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're in training. Isn't it amazing when you're in training and you don't even know you're in training? 
Isn't it amazing when you being prepared for something and you don't even know what it is? The key is when God reveals it, though. Huh? He said, hey, none of them boys. I don't want none of them. He said, you got another boy? He said, yeah, I got another one. He got that tennis sheet. He said, okay, go get him. At 12. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and with all of a beautiful countenance. Look at this, though. Look at this. He was ready, but he was a handsome fellow. He was handsome. He was good looking. And godly to look on. And the Lord said, and the Lord said, Arise, anoint him. But this is he. Yeah, that word is. This is him. This is the one I want. It ain't got nothing to do with what you want. You made a choice and failed. Now this is what I want. This is who I want. Anoint him. You see, here's what you keep missing. Saul's still in position. He's rejected, but he's still in spot. David's anointed, and he's not in spot. Oftentimes, God will anoint you before you get to your spot. God will have already put himself on you, his desire in you, before you ever take position. He will have you already prepared and trained before you ever discover. Okay, y'all ain't talking. I'm back to Jesus. Jesus read it and made discovery, but his anointing was there at his discovery. You still ain't caught. Some things, you ain't going to see the fullness of God made manifest until you get in position. Until you take position, you already anointed, you just ain't in spot yet. See, God always provides a heaven time. So it came down to, God says, you're all looking on the outside. I'm looking at the heart. I'm looking at who I can direct. I'm looking at, even though David got some issues, we know that, but he's a man after my heart, which simply means he want to please me more than pleasing anybody else. David is not a people pleaser. He ain't trying to please his brothers. He ain't trying to please his daddy. He said, I want to please. If God is awesome enough to choose me, the least I can do is say, yes, Lord. The least I can do is submit my will to his will. Why? It's time to be fulfilled. It's time to come into the fullness of what God has for me. So now here, I got to quit. What this psalm's up to be? Your choice or mine. Is it going to be your choice? Or is it going to be God's choice? Your choice or mine? I've already rejected that. I've already said no to that. Oh, no. Man, you have said no to some stuff. But you're going to keep trying to cause to live what he has said no to. Or you're going to keep trying to make work what can't work. Now, since I rejected that, now go get who I want. Go who get who will obey me. Go get the one that I can use. And then it goes on to talk about it. Old lady got into it this morning in the verse, and it talks about from uh, 14 on down how it took David because he was skillful in a certain area to come and pray spirits of all song. Isn't it amazing? You got to serve the one you're going to replace. Huh? 
on you. Sometimes God will put you around the spot to get familiar with the spot. Huh? It's yours and you don't even know it. You serve in it, not understanding that the scripture says, until you've been faithful in that which is another man. God said, I can never give you your own. But if you'll learn how to be, if you'll learn how to serve, God says, one day what you serve will be yours. Y'all catching this? But you got to make some decisions. Your choice or mine? Your way or mine? How you want to do this? Now, what is the significance? The significance is that this is 731 and God says, I'm finalizing what I don't want. It's over. Completion. Done with it. 731. Y'all hear me now? Let me hear you. Y'all hear me. 731. I'm done. 731. been talking. We ought to be one now. We ought to be one now. Ain't no more guessing. Ain't no more thinking about it. Ain't no more. What you going to pray about? What you going to fast about? What you got to think about? I'm done with that. Your purpose is revealed. I'm done with that. The vision is greater than you. What I have for you is greater. What I have for you is more than you can imagine. But I hear God say, have I not been faithful to you? Have I lied to you? Or have I been there for you? So choose. Choose to see the miraculous, the supernatural. Choose the anointed. Saul was rejected, and so was the anointed. God pulled back. You don't understand how. Definitely it is. See, watch this. Let me have it right quick. We have to go home. We almost all. We still wait. When God rejects the spot, the anointing lives. Because yeah, right. the anointing is for the spot. Yeah, yeah. The anointing is for whoever is in the So if he rejects you from the spot, then what belongs to him goes back to him. 